Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. On today's episode, we're going to talk about a topic that is very uh, dear to me, patellar dislocations. Ouch. Yes. Those hurt. So painful, uh, painful injury that we're going to talk about. And so first off, I need to explain my voice often sounds weird when we're doing these videos, Paul. And I think people wonder if I'm a chain smoker. <laughs> I've been wondering. So I'm not. I coach rep basketball and I uh, coach twice a week and I often encourage the kids with loud volumes. Um, and that's why my voice sounds like this. And he yells in the OR all the time too. <laughs> I do not yell in the operating room. Um, so, an uh, interesting story about patellar dislocations last year at our end of the year championship, actually in the bronze medal game, uh, my daughter who plays actually dislocated her patella and I was on the bench. Um, so she fell to the ground screaming like a blood curdling scream, the whole gym went silent and as I was walking over, I realized that her patella was dislocated. It's a, it's a weird feeling, it hurts a lot and it looks weird because your knee is very deformed when it happens. Yeah, and so I looked at it and I knew her patella was dislocated and she was just looking at me with her eyes very, very large going, help me, help me, help me. Is that when you said, get back <laughs> out there, we need two points to win. I said, we are down in this game and I need you. So no, so I walked over and I said to her, okay, this is gonna hurt a little bit but it's gonna get better. Um, so then I proceeded to just reduce it, pop the patella back in place without any sedation, which caused a very short but increased scream for a second. Um, and then she was okay. The crowd was obviously distraught. And then I had to explain to them that A, I was the coach, B, I was her dad. You and just yelled that out to the crowd? I did actually. I did. I said, hey, it's okay. She had a dislocated patella, but I'm not only her dad and coach, but I'm also an orthopedic surgeon. Yeah. Um, and then we shook her off and then the ref said, Hey, take as long as you need. So I took about three minutes and then we got back on there you and go. proceeded to lose the game. Okay, so that's a good segue into <laughs> patellar dislocation. Okay, so who usually gets it, Paul? Well, I think it's, uh, your daughter's how old? She's 13 at the time. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it quite often in teenagers. And yes. I think, is it more common in girls than boys? 100% more yeah. common, girls and boys, and yeah, usually teens, 20s, but once you're like 30 or 40, usually you don't all of a sudden develop that problem. Yeah, okay, so the young, the young athlete will, of, will often, not often, but that it can happen in the young athlete. Absolutely. So do we know of any predisposing factors to people that get patellar dislocations? Why do they get them? Well, um, if, there are some conditions where you have just very lax ligaments. 100%. Uh, and you can tell that uh, often they can hyperextend their elbows or they yep. might have multi-directional instability in their shoulders. Yep. I think those people are at risk for patellar dislocations. Sure. People with abnormal anatomy, you and I have talked about this before, or people that have a shallow groove of their femur or a kneecap that rides really high, that predisposes you to dislocation. Um, a previous dislocation. If you've had this happen before, then you are very much more likely for it to happen again. 100%. And then outside of that, it's, uh, it's trauma. So it's usually either a planting or a twisting type traumatic event or a direct blow from the side. Okay. So you've got a patellar dislocation. And then sometimes the story is, oh, I felt it pop out and it popped back in again. Yes. Or sometimes it popped out and didn't pop back in again until you came to the emergency room or until your dad, who's also the coach <laughs> of the team, runs out and reduces it. Yes, exactly right. So yeah, so they present usually with um, a history like that, severe pain, and often they do not want to straighten that leg. No, no. It's held in a bent position because the kneecap essentially is in their side pocket. All right. Okay, so let's say you've had the patellar dislocation. Yep. Uh, the history is pretty easy, right? It's pretty self explanatory. Yep. Physical examination, if it's still dislocated, it's an obvious finding. Yes. Like I said before, the knee is deformed. Yes. Uh, or if, uh, what is the reduction maneuver? So it's so 99% of the time, or even higher than that, it's to the lateral side. Very rarely, and almost I've never seen it, is a medial dislocation. So the reduction maneuver is pressure from the outside back towards the midline and abruptly straightening the leg. Extension, straighten, straighten that knee out again, and it should pop back. Often oh, requiring yeah. sedation, if you're, <laughs> but if you're in the wilderness or on the basketball court, you probably should just do it. Okay. So that's the history, that's the physical examination. Yep. Uh, we always go history, physical examination, and investigations. Yes. So what investigations, uh, if you've had this happen, you go see your doctor, typically what investigations will he or she order? So we always talk about orthopedic surgeons, we like x-rays. Love x-rays. So a great x-ray to do um, after obviously the reduction is um, three views of the knee to 
check the height of the patella and then on what's called the skyline view that we talked about in some of the other videos to see what the kneecap looks like in the groove. So what are we looking for, Paul, in that view? We want to make sure that the kneecap is happy in the groove. So what I mean is it's sitting in the groove nicely, the groove in your femur where it tracks. It's not tilting too much. Yep. And I always look for on that skyline view any evidence of bone injury or a, a traumatic lesion because if you imagine the patella sliding out, you might have sheared off an osteochondral fragment. So osteo means bone, chondral means cartilage. So a piece of bone and cartilage you might have sheared off and sometimes you can see that on x-ray. Yep. Sometimes you need other investigations to see that. Right, so that's a, that's a great start with the bone. So if you're 100% confident there are no bony lesions, which would be hard to do, um, often the next test would be an MRI. I think ultrasound has a very limited role. CT scan if you already knew you had a large piece of bone potentially. But yes, an MRI looking primary for loose bodies and then that will confirm the rupture of that medial retinaculum or all the soft tissues on the inside that get ripped as it goes across the side. Right, so history, physical examination, investigations consisting of an x-ray and likely an MRI. Yes. Okay. So Treatment. We've got the diagnosis. Uh, now we've got, we've got to treat it. So the first thing is we treat the pain. You're probably going to be in some discomfort. So any sort of analgesics, acetaminophen or an anti-inflammatory yep. uh, to manage the discomfort. Um, and then splinting, are you going to splint that? Yeah, so usually uh, we would splint it uh, fully straight to keep that kneecap for the first week or two. Um, the patient may or may not feel comfortable weight bearing so you could protect them with crutches but allow them to partial yeah. weight bear. So you're allowed to walk on it, it's just you might need to use crutches because it'll hurt too much to walk on it in the immediate uh, time frame because when you're walking with your leg out in extension there's not a huge load uh, that your patella is seeing uh, right. on the articular surface um, okay so we've got uh, analgesics uh, splinting crutches yep. for comfort yep what else and then a brace Okay. Um, a custom brace, a patellofemoral stabilizing brace where there actually is a little bolster built into the brace to push it over to that medial side because it's going to want to kind of drift back to that lateral side. Okay, so uh, how long are you going to not let the person bend their knee for until you get the brace? So, you, uh, so probably a couple of weeks and then get them into a brace and even while they're in the brace we would get them doing some physiotherapy even before. I think we say the word physiotherapy in just about every video we make. It seems to be an important part of it's what we key. do. It's key. So yeah, you've got to get in physiotherapy and the aim of physiotherapy is to strengthen the muscles around the knee yep help prevent this from happening uh, again yep and to regain your motion because yeah. remember we kept you immobilized for a while so your knee may get stiff absolutely so really focusing on those medial quads we talked about in our, our knee anterior knee pain video where those medial quads often are weaker so we need it to pull over to that medial side so yeah combination of strengthening getting your range of motion and then trying to talk about when you're going to get back to some of your more normal stuff oh, okay and when when are we going to get back into sports it's certainly very controversial um some of the resources say as early as six weeks i think to be honest the fear of a repeat dislocation alone will keep you out longer than that um, but somewhere in the, the probably closer to the three to six month range if you talk to a lot of specialists that deal with a lot of this. Okay, so there you go. You get the history, the physical examination, the investigations that are going to be ordered. We touched on the treatment here for patellar dislocation. Yep. What about long term consequences? Do you think it ever happens again? I guess like we said at the beginning of this video, there is a high chance of recurrence. And yep. I have had patients where it just keeps happening. That's right. So recurrence when you're under 20 years old is in the 15 to 50 percent range, which is pretty high. But even if we took the middle of that, one in three people are going to re-dislocate. Yeah. Okay. And remember, if there is some damage uh, done under the patella, that could have some long-term consequences as well. Absolutely. Uh, so treatment. So say you have a, a patella that continues to dislocate twice or three or four times. What, what can we do then? Well, in what I do in a young person. Um, like a teenager still, I would continue with physiotherapy. Yep. Maybe we went back to sports a bit too soon and see if we can, if you're allowed to or if it's possible to play that sport with the brace on and see if that stops it from recurring. And that's really exactly what we did to prevent that second dislocation. Um, and then one of the other goals I think that you're kind of implying is that we're trying to get them past skeletal maturity. We want all of their growth plates to fuse before we go in there and start potentially doing something to particularly the bones to cause a problem. Yeah, then as you get older, there are some surgical procedures to realign the patella uh, uh, to tr help get it to track better. Absolutely, and rebuild some of those medial soft tissues. Um, those are, are uh, uncommon, thankfully, but definitely potential options for the recurrent dislocator. 
And then the big thing we worry about if this goes on past your teens and continues to happen, we worry about the development of post-traumatic osteoarthritis under the kneecap. Yes, or even sometimes on that groove. Sometimes that groove can knock a chip off too. So for sure, you can end up with a chronic anterior knee pain. Just back to what we talked about before, if there is a loose body inside of that knee, is there anything we can do to, do to deal with that? Yeah, so if there is a loose body, if it's a large loose body and you can find out the donor site where it came from, yep. sometimes that can be reattached. Yep. Uh, if it's a smaller loose body or for some reason it cannot be reattached and it's causing symptoms, so like catching, locking sensation in your knee, then that loose body can be removed arthroscopically. Exactly right. So there you go. I think that's the A to Z of patellar dislocations. A to Z, A, A to Z, either way. Canadian, American, whatever. So um, if you enjoyed this video. Please like it uh, and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Yeah, please subscribe, please leave us some comments and remember, you are in charge of your own health. See you next time.